Here, Eddie's more, he's relaxed. He's, he's still Eddie, but just a, a more cooler Eddie. He, he's dad Eddie. And here's the review. All right, y'all, just got done watching Beverly Hills Cop, Axel Foley. Came into this with almost no expectations because I'm not a fan of this franchise. Now, mind you, mind you, I do love the first movie, one of my favorites of all time, Lightning in a Bottle. They try to recapture that magic in the second movie. In my honest opinion, I thought they failed. Eddie was just too hyper. You could tell he was in like his full Eddie ego shit where it was just constantly fast talking, blah, 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 blah. And it just, it was annoying. It was too much. Three, well, we don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Beverly Hills Cop 3. Um, so here with this one now, fast forward 30 years later, we get a fourth movie. And I saw the teaser trailer. I said, damn, straight to Netflix also. So I didn't have much expectations, but I am a fan of Eddie. I love Eddie Murphy. Even in his worst movies, I always find some good in it, and it's always Eddie Murphy. So I knew that, okay, even if this movie is bad, I know that I'm still going to enjoy it because of Eddie Murphy. And y'all, that's kind of exactly what happened. So Beverly Hills Cop 4 really tries to recapture the magic, once again, of the first movie. Like a whole bunch of nostalgia, it's chock full of nostalgia, even from the soundtrack. Only was the only thing I was missing was "Stir It Up" with uh, Patti LaBelle, and also the signature Eddie Murphy laugh, which I saw an interview, and he said he ditched the laugh because too many people were trying to imitate him, and the first thing they would do was a. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> Without music, <all> right? <laughs> <laughs> And he said he got tired of you. He didn't want to be known as the guy with the <laughs> So he said, fuck it. He didn't do the laugh anymore. This movie is very bare bones, okay? Uh, but it does follow the Beverly Hills Cop formula to the T. It's basically a remake of the first movie. So like how Force Awakens was a remake of Star Wars, this was a remake of the first Beverly Hills Cop movie. But only thing now is that you throw a daughter into the mix, you throw the daughter's boyfriend who's also a cop into the mix, and it's just very formulaic, uh, very by the numbers. We've seen this before, but I still had a good time with it, though. I, I still enjoy this movie for the most part because you could tell that the cast had a really good time. You know, it was like a family reunion seeing Eddie back with Taggart and Rosewood and um, even your boy Sage, you know, <laughs> Achwell, Achwell. It was good to see everybody again, like nostalgic. This movie's very nostalgic. So if you're a Beverly Hills Cop fan, especially the first movie, I think you will have enjoyment of this one. A couple things did get on my nerves though. All right, well, the main thing that got on my nerves is the cliche story of the the father and daughter. You know, the father uh, was away for a long time and the daughter's resentful of him. And, and even though I, I love this actress, I remember her from that movie Zola from a few years back. Uh, lovely actress but here she was just angry the whole movie even when she smiled she was angry right if you watch the movie you know what i'm talking about even when she cracked a smile and when she laughed she still had an angry look like <laughs> smile i am smiling and it just got on my nerves man like similar to over the top where stallone's kid kept giving him shit the whole movie for not being there and it's like man cut the nigga some slack man like she gave eddie shit this whole movie uh, you weren't there you weren't there you was out of my life wait a minute you cut me out your life i know but you didn't fight for it you didn't fight for anything but your job <laughs> man at that moment i want to slap the shit out of her i'm sorry man look i don't condone slapping women i'm not against violence against women but there should be an exception with fathers and their daughters when the daughters get too out of line you know what i mean i think sometimes like a good uh, father slap to a daughter is necessary and don't slap it like the fuck her up man just slap some sense into her you know what i mean Dude, 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 not everybody, no. It just got on my nerves the whole time. And you know where the movie is going. You know that eventually she's going to come around. She's going to realize he's a good man. You know, everybody's going to co-sign for him. And like, your father loves you. He cares about you. And she's going to say, you know what? You're right. I love my dad. And it's going to be kumbaya. We're like, we know this, okay? Yeah, I, I did laugh quite a few times. But I think probably the, the biggest laugh I got in this movie, y'all, it was a scene that had to do with a, um, a parking meter officer where she was trying to give the uh, Eddie a, a parking ticket and <laughs> he was trying to get out of it and had to do with a uh, pepper spray and her being really persistent and and her and her uh, her bust. You know, I'm saying, nah, that, that didn't sound right. Well, I'm trying to be persistent and giving him a ticket and because he didn't want to take the ticket, 
pepper spray came into the mix. I don't know, to me, I thought that was the funniest shit in the movie. Kevin Bacon is also in here doing what Kevin Bacon does, play a really good villain. Uh, even if it's a cliched villain that we've seen many times before, I just love seeing Kevin Bacon as the villain. I'm sorry, man. I, uh, yeah, Kevin Bacon works as the villain every single time. I don't care what movie it is. The action here is also very simple. You know, everybody can't be John Wick. Uh, Bad Boys 4 really tried. They was ambitious with their action scenes. And this one here felt more old school. This is more 80-ish action, you know. Not over the top, not, well, kind of over the top. Not, but I'm saying not crazy as action is nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, like, John Wick now is the new, like, action bar that you want to reach. You know what I'm saying? This here kind of goes back to the simplistic 80s shit. So not to ramble on, man, because I know there's so many reviews in this movie. Listen, I, I thought it was okay. I, I'm not going to sit there and say, like, yeah, I really love this and... You know, or it was just, you know, so fantastic. But I had a good time with it because I love Eddie Murphy, you know. So I, I can see people shitting on this movie, but I can see people also praising this movie. I'm kind of in the middle. And the reason I'm in the middle is because I will admit that this is a very by the numbers action comedy that a lot of times a comedy falls flat. It has a very predictable story. A lot of the shit you see coming a mile away and uh, some of the stuff just kind of got on my nerves a little bit. But damn it, I love Eddie Murphy, man. All right, I even love Norbit, okay? And and I love this this commerce side of Eddie. Like, there's even a point where, you know, you realize, like, okay, so Axel's, one of his uh, signature things that he does is that he plays different characters, and that's kind of, I guess, the catalyst for coming to America. We play all the different characters and put in the makeup and shit. But before then, it was Beverly Hills Cop where we, he'd be put in these situations, and he had to play a certain character and, you know, weasel his way out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was one of his signatures. And then even it gets to a point in this movie where it doesn't work anymore. Like, remember the hotel scene in the first movie where... He's all like, yeah, man, you know, I guess you can call out Michael Jackson can sit on top of the world as long as he can't sit in the Beverly Hills uh, uh, Hotel because there's no niggas allowed in there, you know. And he gets ready to do it, then he says, you know what, I'm too tired for this shit. How much is the room? You know, <laughs> he really dials it back a lot, man. And then he even tries on your boy Louis Guzman, and he's like, bro, like, who you talking to? Yeah, that, that shit doesn't, it worked back in the 80s, but it doesn't work now. So Eddie really dials it down here, which is cool because, like I said, in the second movie, he just goes way over the top with it like he does it in the first movie but it, it's grounded it's believable and the second movie it's like that nigga just did like fuck cocaine this nigga did kool-aid with sugar if he ain't why why can't i the boat why can't i frisk him why won't he let me frisk him then cut the boat why can't i frisk him if he ain't got the wild like it's like bro calm down relax relax here eddie's more he's relaxed he's, he's still eddie but just a, a more cooler eddie he, he's dad eddie Speaking of dad, I didn't realize his daughter was in this movie. So there's a scene where he's getting arrested, right? And uh, I'm looking at the girl. I'm like, damn, I said, she's cute as hell. I said, damn, who the fuck is that? That's a fine motherfucker, man. And then I kept looking. I said, wait a minute. Is that Eddie's daughter? I felt so filthy. I, I don't know, man. I got this thing where when it comes to my childhood heroes, I can't look. Even if their daughters are hot, I can't look at their daughters like that. Because I look at my childhood heroes are like uncles. Like Eddie is unk. He's family. Nigga don't know me, but he's family. You know what I'm saying? Then I just feel guilty, you know, lusting over something that came out of his nuts. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yo, pause like a motherfucker right there. <laughs> so, yeah, y'all. Oh, um, yeah, shout out to Eddie's daughter, man. I don't get yeah, She's still fine as hell, man. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, this, there's certain, like, look, I, I love Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee is pops, but, yo, Bruce Lee got a fine ass daughter. Uh, yo, even uh, Stallone, um, yeah, that, that's definitely my second pause, man. But Stallone's daughter, he has a hot daughter. Not Sistine, not the not the brown, not the uh, black hair one, but the other one. The the not the curvy one. Because there's this real skinny one. And there's Sistine, who's the brown hair one. But then there's another one. There's a bustier one. And I'm like, yeah, that motherfucker, yeah. I'm wrapping this up, I give Beverly Hills Cop Axel Foley, I'll give this a B-. I, I want to, like, okay, as far as the movie goes, I would give it a C. But because Eddie is so likable and I fuck with Eddie and unless it's coming to America, that I cannot excuse, even though, it, you know, I, I can't excuse that one. But this one I, have, I will give it a pass because it's Beverly Hills Cop. It follows the formula, follows it to the T. It did what it's supposed to do. And it's, this felt like a Beverly Hills Cop movie. And I will watch another one if it comes out. And uh, to me, honestly, like I said, I'm not a fan of this franchise, but this is my favorite one after the first movie. Yeah, so I say the first one, this one. And then two, and then that's it. We were shot. This is the third one. No, they ain't. 
Just like uh, like uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Like, look, they're, they're, right now there's only three Beverly Hills Cop movies, and this is the third one to me. All right, I don't want to hear that shit. So, anyways, y'all, what you think about the movie? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you are you in the middle like me? Are you an Eddie fan, or do you think Eddie just does too damn much? Whatever you think, comment freely below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you got this far into the video. And that's it, and that's all. I'm out.